it is day two here at the Port Townsend Film Festival. Um, we stayed up far too late last night, all hanging out and talking with a lot of the uh, other cohort that came in from both the music program at my school and a couple other schools along the coast and the PNW, which uh, we're all, all the scholarship folks are staying kind of in one area. We're at Fort Warden, uh, staying in one of the old military um, uh, housing areas. So it's actually pretty nice. Uh, small rooms, but single rooms, no bunking up like dorm style usually, which I was a little nervous about just because space issues. Um, with strangers, but no, it, it turned out pretty well. Uh, what did I go see yesterday? I saw Stephen Tobolowski's film, uh, The Primal Instinct, which was basically a spoken word uh, style show. It was like a stand-up show. It was actually shot at the Moore Theater down in Seattle, which isn't too far from here. Um, been there a couple of times. Uh, and yeah, it was it was just him standing up and telling stories and telling talking about like why we tell stories and. Uh, it was it was pretty cool. Um, I enjoyed it. However, it was kind of weird, like going to a stand-up thing. Well, it wasn't really stand-up, but it was spoken word. You know, just basically one take, all him on stage, just talking to a live audience. That was a little strange seeing uh, at a film festival. But uh, unfortunately, it was like one of the only things I could get into yesterday. Um, while I did, you know, get get the pass, it doesn't guarantee a spot in the theaters. Uh, I got kicked out twice. Uh, from line well not really kicked out, but they ran out of passes. I didn't get to the line soon enough It's kind of like line up an hour and a half beforehand um, But the second thing that I did end up seeing at like 9 15 last night was a little documentary called the weight of water Which is about this guy Eric who he was the first blind man to summit Everest uh, and He the, the second one they, they did a documentary on that. I think it was called the blind side um, So that was pretty cool and this one was called The Weight of Water, and it was about his adventure as a blind man kayaking down the Grand Canyon. And I have to tell you, this movie was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I got to speak a little bit with the director, um, and I got to nerd out over about, like, oh, hey, how'd you get audio for all of this? And, like, where'd you, you know, hide the cameras on these kayaks and get these incredible scenes? And it was a surprisingly emotional ride, and I highly, highly recommend checking it out. Um, once again, it's called The Weight of Water, so definitely go go see that when you get a chance. Um, but yeah, that, that was that was my my experience so far at, at the Port Townsend Film Festival. It's been a blast. I've, I've gotten the opportunity to talk to quite a few directors and people who have worked on a lot of these films. We have access to kind of a lounge area where the filmmakers are, which is super nice. Um, been trying to shamelessly plug myself as much as possible. But yeah, uh, today... I don't know exactly what we have lined up today. We have a kind of a meeting in the morning with the people who set up the scholarship. Uh, and then there's a talk with some, I think it's a forum with a bunch of the directors that we're gonna go to. Go to. So it'll it'll be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I will I will check back in throughout the day and I will insert all of the all of the pretty sights as I see them. Alright. Have a good day everybody. day two of the Port Townsend Film Festival and yeah I wanted to go over a couple of things that I was able I was fortunate enough to go see so far um, I didn't do anything on Friday night because we got back like super late uh, but it was it was good I, so Friday night uh, after I got into town I went and I hung out at the filmmakers lounge for a little bit and I got I was fortunate enough to uh, meet 
a director of one of the films here called The Weight of Water. And I ended up going to see that film at night and it was a wonderful, wonderful documentary about this guy named Eric who is blind and it was, uh, he was the first blind person to summit Mount Everest. And this documentary, The Weight of Water, was about his quest to be the first blind kayaker down the Grand Canyon. Um, it was it was a really moving documentary, um, and I, I really don't want to spoil like anything about it because it's one of those like adventure ones that you have to see and like get the emotion from it, just like face to face. See it on a big screen if it comes to a festival near your town. It's definitely worth it. Um, but yeah, that, that was good. Uh, I ended up going directly back to the dorms after that because it was super late and crashing. Um, but the next day was when all the real adventures kind of began as well, where we actually spent a lot of time, me and the other people from the school down here uh, in Port Townsend itself and checking out the town a little bit and going to, uh, going to film. So the first thing that I ended up doing was going to a director's panel in the morning where a bunch of these documentary filmmakers who are here, they have films submitted in the festival, did like an open forum, just kind of talking about like their stories and different tactics that went about making these documentaries. You know, some of them took a year, some of them took four years, five years to make and fully get together. Um, Michael Brown, the documentary maker for The Weight of Water was also there. So he talked a little bit about it. He also did a Q&A that first night after the screening and the second screening that my friends went to. So we got to talk to him a little bit more uh, about his film, but they were talking about like interview tactics, different things that you could do to uh, kind of get to know your subjects a little bit better. And you know, the difference between like intrusive and non-intrusive filmmaking, especially when it comes to documentary making, which I find to be very important. Um, I'll probably make another video going more detail of like stuff I've actually learned, like classroom style from this festival. I think that would be kind of a fun little thing to put together. Um, but for now, I'll go over kind of the films. So the first film I saw was Day One, and it was about this this international school in, I believe it was St. Yeah, it was St. Louis, and it's for refugee children, who it's basically a two-year transitional program for children who are refugees and families of refugees, um, and how they take these students into this program and integrate them into the kind of American school system so they can transition in easily. It was really intense, um, especially, you know, because some of these students were like former child soldiers and, you know, I mean, getting them kind of acquainted with not only schooling, but like American society just in general. Uh, and it kind of went in, it, the main focus was the school and the people who like bring these students together and the troubles these students have. But a lot of it also had to do with the political climate and nowadays especially and how relevant this was uh, and also like how these families are put into like housing and refugee housing and how these neighborhoods aren't safe either uh especially for these kids who are already you know used to these non-safe environments and coming over here and just are being put into another unsafe environment it's uh it's pretty intense but it's i, I think while, while the film ran a little long for me i do believe that it's a film that needs to be seen especially right now so day one uh, definitely check it out um, the second thing that we went to that night, uh, was a, uh, it was like, it was, it was called the viewer's choice, uh, segment number two, and it was basically a bunch of short films. So like eight minutes to 15, I believe was the longest one, 16, I'm looking at the paper. I have the paper pulled up to kind of go over the different ones that we saw. Um, and yeah, it was, it was good. It was about like 80 minutes total. There were, I believe 10, um, or maybe it was just eight. Uh, films, short films that we sat there and a couple of the directors was there, including one of the directors who I ended up talking to in line the other day, him and his wife produced one of the, and directed one of these films. That was really interesting. So I, I'm going to run through them really quick. I have my notes here. So the first one was The Phantom 52 and it was this really surreal animated film, which I didn't expect here. Um, and it's basically, it's almost like a poem about a trucker and, and it's this really surreal thing about like this, the spirit of the trucker on the road. And it, it's one of those where it's like, if, if you smoke a lot of weed beforehand, you'll probably enjoy it even more. Uh, I, I just love the visuals, very intense. The, uh, the guy that they did to do the narration for it, uh, Tom Skerritt, uh, did a fantastic job and 
yeah, it was, it, it's, it's one of those that I can't really explain it to you. You have to see it, but uh, yeah, it's called the Phantom 52. Look for that. Uh, the second one was called Boxes. Uh, this might be my favorite one out of the shorts that we saw. It was about this granddaughter coming over to help. I guess it, it seemed like her grandfather had passed away, so she was coming over to help her grandma clean out like some of his old stuff. She ends up finding this box uh, full of stuff from uh, the Holocaust or pre-Holocaust uh, of her grandmother's. And I'm not gonna spoil this, but there's a very intense like family altering moment in this that the granddaughter discovers something that she wasn't aware of about her grandmother from these like photographs and stuff that she had before the Holocaust occurred. Uh, highly, highly recommended. It's called Boxes. Uh, Jeremy Borison directed it. He's out of New York. He was one of the filmmakers at the panel. Uh, one person I actually got to talk to, I asked him a question at the end about how he cast this grandmother because it's based on a true story. Uh, and he had some interesting answers. Once again, that's something I'll go over later on uh, just with, I'll go over everything I learned, etc. Next one, uh, it was kind of short little horror film called The Helping Hand. This family gets this like little, it's like a baby cam for their daughter and it ends up like being sentient and it like possesses her, I think in a way. And then like murder occurs and it's pretty intense. The little girl they got to play it was like one of those like shining girls that you don't want to meet at the end of a long hallway. It was very well done. Uh, Next one was a super artsy film called Dog in the Woods. Uh, it was definitely like a testament to post-production effects. And it was just a dog and like going out, he was let out for a walk or something. And like in the house, it was cool because it was all black and white from the dog's perspective. Goes in the forest and it's just trippy colors and like surreal imagery. And it's probably also one of my favorites. Like that, between that and boxes, I mean, just visually it was, fantastic to look at i really i would love to see that one get like online released on you know on youtube or something because i think it would do really well it's just a trip to look at uh so dog in the woods next one it was called horse rich and dirt poor and it was about an ecologist who was doing this short documentary about wild horses in nevada and how they're affecting the ecosystem um and kind of like you know how these horses just like affecting the ground near these water areas or affecting water flow and populations. And uh, so yeah, if you're, you know, nature can, uh, and just a nature documentary about how it's affecting the climate and the argument about how to handle these wild horses where the public is torn between two different ways to handle it. If you're into that kind of stuff, very interesting. There's some beautiful imagery of like herds of wild horses running around, very cool. Uh, the next one was kind of a comedy and it was called Westphalia. And it's about this couple who has this uh, VW Westphalia and they basically get in and go camping. But the whole point of it is they're trying to get likes on their Instagram. So it's about this couple like po going camping and posing in all these like weird ways where it's like, oh, we're in this serene place. And the only reason they're doing it is to like take a picture and try to get more likes than their friends. And it was like very relevant to my experience so far in Seattle culture. Uh, <laughs> And, and social media culture in general. Very funny, it was, it was, I think the only like legitimate laugh I got that whole nice, cause a lot of the stuff was either really serious or, you know, drama in the sense that, you know, it's like, this is a dramatic performance and, you know, not so much like drama as in intense stuff, um, which comes to my next one, which is the director I talked to earlier, um, Anu and her husband directed this film that was called Counterbalance. It was only about six minutes long, but essentially it was, just an art piece uh, of a dance performance between this man who doesn't have his legs and this woman who's been his dance partner for, I think they were saying like 10 years or something. Uh, and it kind of went through how they choreographed this dance and like how they incorporated his wheelchair and all of this really interesting stuff. And then they had like the, the actual, they had a song written for it that they ended up doing this dance to. And it was, yeah, it was just the dance. It really wasn't anything more, but it was, it was cool to look at. Uh, Second to the last was Serpendipity, which was about this guy with, he was basically a Medusa. It was an animated film uh, out of one of the animation schools out here. And so he had the like Medusa, like, you know, snakes and stuff. And like, he's trying to go on this date with this woman and this woman like takes off her glasses. It's really cute to like, you know, not to look better, I guess, I don't know. Uh, and you know, they're on this date. The snakes keep looking at this waiter because he keeps screwing up and like turning him to stone. And yeah, it was, it was silly, really good animation though. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, uh, it, I wouldn't say it wasn't my favorite, but at the same time, it's uh, like, 
I'm not I'm not a big animation person just in general, but I do appreciate how long animation takes, especially just the very limited animation and keyframing that I've done in like After Effects. That that shit's intense. So yeah, bravo for them for getting that submitted. And the last one, which was I think it was the strangest real life piece. Uh, it was a short four minute documentary. It was called Can Dolls Be My Neighbor? And you never see this this lady that this documentary is about, but essentially it's this Japanese town where this woman came home after, I believe, going to college. And she moved back to her childhood home and she discovered that there were only 40 people left in this town that she left however many years ago. And so she started making dolls from all of these people that she used to know who had all moved away and placing them around town like where they worked. And I guess word got out and so people would start contacting her that moved out of this town to like, you know, go to the city and, you know, be more prosperous or for work, etc. And they'd be like, oh, can you put my doll at this place where I used to go fishing or at this place where, you know, I used to work or on this bench where I used to go every day. It was, it was really surreal uh, for a real life story and it was only four minutes long. So if you can find this one, it's visually interesting the way they told the story without ever actually so showing the subject. They like told the story through the doll's perspective using different voice actors to kind of like voice these dolls. Um, yeah, very interesting. It's called Can Dolls Be My Neighbor? So definitely check that out. Um, so this is, this is my last day here at Port Townsend Film Festival. We did a couple of things this morning and uh, went out to the lighthouse. I have a little bit of footage that I'm going to tack in on the end and try to be artsy. Um, but I'm going to go around, uh, go to one more film. I believe it's called, you know what? I'm actually going to look this up because I've heard really good things about it. It's called Fire on the Hill. And it's about these cowboys in Compton. And apparently they're here as well. The, the subjects of the film are here too, to talk a little bit about it afterwards. So I'm really looking forward to checking it out. Um, but yeah, uh, I have I have some really other cool stories that I'd like to talk about at a future date. Uh, Michael Brown, once again, I. Uh, the doc, the filmmaker for um, The Weight of Water. I, I got to spend some actual time and talk to him for a while, and it was a really great experience as a young filmmaker, being able to sit down with this person who's, you know, making this film around the circuit and, like, pick his brain for a while, and so did everybody else from our class. He was he was at one of the bars last night we were hanging out at. And, yeah, that and uh, just, just a lot of the people that I've met here uh, and some of the, um, the festival runners, you know, picking their brains a little bit, some just storytellers who are here. It's been it's been a really eye-opening and fascinating experience, um, and yeah, I will I will definitely I will do a video probably later tonight about the film that I see today and kind of a wrap-up video for the whole the uh, film festival as a whole. But it's been a really fantastic first-time experience for a brand new filmmaker, and I, I honestly can't wait to come back. I, I will definitely be here next year. But uh, for now, I'm gonna go check out this last film, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.